Hello YouTube, today we're jumping over to the Isle of Isla. See you in a sec. Hello YouTube, and welcome back to Happy Hour. Today we are going to jump over to Isla and do another Scotch whiskey review. One of my favorites, it's been one of my favorites for many, many years. It's been my go-to peated, smoky, peat monster, Isla, cask strength, or close to cask strength. All those things in one beautiful bottle. And uh, we're talking about Ardbeg Ugadal. So you can see, I really just cracked this bottle. Um, this bottle has actually been sitting on my shelf for probably about a year. Um, probably since last winter. I tend to, uh, I don't drink peated whiskeys solely when the weather gets cold, but I tend to favor them when the weather gets a little bit colder. So I feel like I kind of revisit this bottle or a bottle like this <laughs> every, every year around this time. So yeah, the weather's kind of crappy out right now. Um, yeah, it's like 40 degrees and rainy and dark and just blah. So yeah, what better time to get into these warming, peated, strong um, Isla whiskeys than, than right now. So yeah, I alluded to this is, you know, you've got the, there's a couple of cults, I've heard this said out there in the whiskey world, uh, the cult of Laphroaig and the cult of Ardbeg. They're two very, uh, I don't know if they're that polarizing. I think it's just fun to talk about, but... You have some people that are really the Freud heads, um, and then other group of people that are, you know, Ardbeg fanatics. Uh, I like them both. Uh, I'm not really that fussy. I like all types of booze. <laughs> but this probably has been historically, like I said, probably my favorite expression of what I love about the Isla whiskeys. Um, it's really a combination. For me, it's a combination. It's got everything rolled into one. It's sweet, it's strong. Um, it's probably jumping to that. It's 54.2%. So it's it's a strong, it's warming without the peat and all the all the characteristics. It's it's you know it's quite hot to begin with, but it's got those lovely warming peaty, peaty notes. Um, it's got spicy notes, a lot of sherried whiskey in here, so you got a lot of the sweetness as well. To me, it's just so incredibly balanced. When I first this was, I think might have been my first. Isla whiskey that I had and I kind of ruined myself. I kind of ruined it for me. I don't want to say that I don't like other ones. Like I said, like a Lafroig 10 or even Ardbeg 10. I've told I've done a review on the Port Charlotte, which is fantastic. Uh Lagavulin 16. I've got probably six or seven or eight bottles. But this to me kind of encompasses it was my first love of the island. And it really does encompass all of the things that I love about Scotch in, in one bottle. And it's reasonably priced as well. Anyways, enough yik yak. Let's pour it and see what we get. All right. So Ardbeg Ugadal. It's a beautiful color. Oh man. Yeah, it's just. So, you know, to, to we got two types of people, I guess. People that have tried Isla whiskeys and know exactly what I'm talking about and people who haven't. <laughs> and until you have, it's really hard to describe. It's really hard to describe some of these these smells and these tastes that you get in a way that doesn't sound off-putting. You know, I talk about, you know, like uh, rubber. I get like Band-Aid, like that, that kind of plasticky chemically Band-Aid smell. You get salt, I get like smoked meats, like ham, like honey-baked ham, like seaweed. Like none of those things sound like they should be in whiskey. <laughs> But you just have to trust me. Either you either like it or you, I guess you don't. But but yeah, the words and the descriptors can be to a to a not to the uninitiated can certainly sound a little bit off putting. I would say you certainly need to try it um, and see for yourself. But yeah, the rubber. Obviously, there's quite a bit of peat in here. I find it's not as punch in the face as the tens, the Lafroig ten and Ardbeg ten. I feel like those are kind of the quintessential expressions of either of those two distilleries, which are just like, boom, you know, but generally I think they're both just a bourbon barrel aged whiskeys, obviously 10 years old. There's no, I don't think there's any sherry in either of those. Here it's quite heavily sherried uh, in the Ugadal, but the tens are really like a bourbon forward, like a bourbon forward aged whiskey and then peat. So it's like those two things going strong with one another. 
This guy, like I said, is considerably more well-rounded, I think, um, if that's what you're going for. Uh, but lots of sherry, so you get the sweetness, rounded sweetness. You get the the Isla, the distinct Isla notes. Like I said, the rubber, the saltiness, the brininess. That smoked meats. I don't know what kind of meat. It's not like a bacon. Like, uh, I think because there's like a saltiness, like a smokiness and a saltiness. Generally, those two flavors together, I think of meat, smoky and salty. I think of meat, so that's probably where this meat thing's coming from. But yeah, I get sherried whiskey underneath of there as well. I get kind of like also like some darker fruit notes, like a little bit of like black currant or... Oh man, it's just, there's just so much going on. It's really, it's just special. Anyways, let's taste it. Mm. Oh man, it's so, it's so good. It's so good. It's so, it tastes thick, like the mouth, there's tons of oils in here. So the mouth coating, the mouth feel is amazing. It coats the mouth completely. It's not thin, it's almost syrupy. And to be honest with you, everything that I get on the nose, I get on the taste with even a little bit more sweetness. So I get kind of a black currant, kind of a some darker fruits. I get a little bit of peat. I know there's a lot of peat in here, but the peat's not overwhelming. I get that sherried whiskey. I think just think it balances so well that really, to me, nothing is overpowered. There's a lot of strong notes, strong flavors in here, but not any any of them aren't not any individual or any one of them don't seem to be overpowering the others, which is obviously a mark of a pretty well-rounded whiskey. So that's why I love it. To my taste, it's kind of it, it to me. It's 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 a perfect Isla whiskey. Um, the only thing it doesn't have is an age statement. But I don't know that I really care about that so much. Again, I've said this before. Yeah, I love age statements. They're a mark of quality. You know exactly what you're getting. But really, at the end of it, it's what's in the glass and what it tastes like. And this is fantastic. Price. Price is another thing. Um, it's 80 bucks. Now, I know 80 bucks is, is kind of steep for a, for a bottle of whiskey. But I think for what you're getting, the uniqueness and the well-roundedness, and, and again, 54%. Um, it just, it's, it's a pretty good deal. I think it's a, it's a fair price for me. I have no problem. I'll always have a bottle of this on my shelf. I think it just, it's a, like I said, many, many times already. To me, this is the epitome of what, uh, what I like in Isla whiskeys. Also, at 54%, uh, I generally don't add water to this. Let me have another taste. Yeah, at 54%. It doesn't drink to me like 54%. It is no stronger, in fact, maybe even less strong or less hot than some whiskeys that I that drink at 40 or 43. I think a lot of it probably has to do with the oil content. There's, there, It's so thick and viscous that that's probably uh, coating the taste buds a little bit. And I, I don't know, but it just, it drinks fantastically. I don't even need to add water. Um, I'm not gonna add water because I don't have any here, so. I'm going to enjoy it neat. But yeah, this is, to me, this is a no-brainer. Uh, I got I to gotta rate this. I'm going to go with another 9.5. I just did a 9.5 with the Deanston 12, but I'm kind of thinking of it as if somebody was to say, hey, I want something that's smoky, that kind of re represents that Isla, that Isla flavor or that Isla kind of style, but I also like something that's sweet. I like something that's well-rounded. To me, this is the first thing that pops in my mind. It's got all of those things in spades, and it's relatively affordable. It's not, uh, you know, it's not some crazy six hundred dollar bottle that you got to go hunt down on the on the gray market. It's pretty much available everywhere, as far as I know. I've never had a problem getting it. I think if if your store sells Ardbeg, then they probably have this, or they can at least get it. Um, but yeah, it's a nine and a half out of ten. So. It sucks outside. We're going to go out for dinner a little bit, and I'm going to drink some more whiskeys. I have no idea what, but we'll see. Thanks for watching Happy Hour. Stay warm. Cheers.